Greetings Cancer and Cancer Rising. This is your Western Forecast for 2025. 2025, every single planet is changing signs. Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, even the outer planets. This is very rare. Um, it's going to be unsettling as we're because they're going to go retrograde in and out before 2026, and it's firmly in these new signs. But all of the, all of the four outer planets that impacts society, they're changing signs all in harmony with one another. So I did a video called 2025, A Paradigm Shift, and it discusses more of the society, um, governments, and politics, and how, and how we're not going off a cliff. There's a lot of fear and decisiveness going on. Part of that was powerful, dark Pluto in Capricorn from 2008 until the end of 2024. Pluto in Capricorn, Capricorn can be very controlling, elitist, rules government, um, and so a lot of very uh, driven, uh, it, was in, it was motivating a lot of desire for autocrats, for power, for control. But now Pluto is in Aquarius, and for the next 20 years, Aquarius rules humanity, the humanitarian, the collective, community. It's the sign of friendships. So we had to, you know, bring out the darkness, bring it in into the light. And we're not, it's not going to get worse. It wants to start getting better. But 2025, we're only starting to see the shifting in the right directions. Now, it may take till July or August 2025 for most of us to see some light and hope and promise at the end of the, the tunnel. Now, before I um, zoom out and look at how these outer planets, which is life-changing, societal-changing, influencing you individually, I want to zoom in and really look at what are you feeling individually? What's going on in your personal everyday life? Now, Mars is the warrior planet. It's aggressive, it's assertive, it's confident, but it's retrograde. And it goes retrograde every two years. It went retrograde December the 6th. Um, until February the 23rd. Mars, warrior Mars, is retrograding in Cancer, um, which is what we call the in the first sector, the first house for Cancer or Cancer rising. Now, the Mars will then release all that frustration and start uh, becoming more assertive and confident after it goes direct February the 23rd, but continuing in Cancer until April the 17th. So the first three and a half months, Mars is aggressively trying to uh, trigger all new uh, goals and ventures. But the first nearly two months, when it's retrograde, you might be spinning your wheels. It seems like, is this, you know, is this even going to work out? You may be feeling really frustrated. But here's the good news. Cancer is a water sign. It's taskmaster, pragmatic, security oriented Saturn is in Pisces, a water sign. Saturn went into Pisces in March 2023. Um, and till the end of May 2025. Saturn in Pisces, water sign, compatible with Mars and Cancer, and your sun sign, 
a water sign. So the Saturn is helping to bring support and discipline and concentration for that Mars in Cancer to achieve its goals. The, nearly the first two months with it retrograde, it may seem like, you know, it's taking so much more effort, it could be exhausting and more delaying, but the Saturn is keeping you from giving up, keeping you disciplined and focused. So by the end of February, through the middle of April, as the Mars is direct, it is in harmony with Saturn, and you're going to start to really accomplish these goals. And with Mars in your sign, you're trying to initiate some major new beginnings, open up a new business, start a new job, or any kind of uh, new undertaking. Now, let's be, now we're gonna start to zoom out and look at the Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, these outer planets, how it's going to, because these are life-changing and they're once in a lifetime, and how is it going to impact cancer or cancer rising? But first, before I zoom out, if you enjoy these kinds of videos and would like to see more of them, click like and subscribe, and don't forget to click on the notification bell so you can receive the latest postings. All right. Before I get to Neptune, Neptune is going into Aries April the 1st, first time in about 166 years. Um, it is, I want to talk about Venus, because Venus on March the 1st through April the 11th is going to be retrograde. Mars retrogrades every two years, Venus retrogrades every year and a half. Retrogrades, a time of reevaluating, resetting, second guessing, revising. Venus in Aries retrograde, in general, is going to test your relationships. But since Aries, Venus is in Aries, is 10 signs past Cancer, and the 10th deals with career, then there could be a lot of testing of professional relationships, or maybe a friendship um, or something more connected with your work uh, gets complicated because maybe you're having some pro problems to work out, or you gotta see each other at work. So that's the Venus, March the 1st through April the 11th. But come April the 1st, now Neptune is moving into Aries, joining Venus. So Neptune, for the first time in 166 years, is moving into the 10th house of career, visibility, your professional reputation, sometimes fame, uh, certainly um, all this uh, take charge in leadership, that's all the 10th house, and here's Neptune. And Neptune will only, will just give us a preview of all these career matters, April the 1st till October 22nd, which then retrogrades back into Pisces, tying up loose ends, did you learn your lessons? And then in February 2026, Neptune is back into Aries until 2039. If it was just Aries, if it was just Neptune in Aries, you would have to really consider the darker side of Neptune, which is all this confusing, transitional, um, unfocused energies of, of Neptune especially with career, where's all this going? Can I trust this? But there's really good news here. Saturn, realistic, grounding, pragmatic Saturn is going into Aries on May the 24th through September the 1st in your 10th house of business and career matters. That happens about every 30 years. Saturn is the natural ruler of the 10th house of career matters. 
because Saturn is all about responsibility and hard work and, and that Saturn is going to be aligning with Neptune. If we didn't have Pluto and Uranus, these two powerful outer planets in harmony with Neptune and Saturn, then we'd have to be a little worried because Neptune can be all that fantasy and, um, and escapism and Saturn is reality and many times Saturn to Neptune without any positive support can trigger um, avoiding escaping reality, could trigger depression, anxiety, and it's in your 10th house of careers. But hardly any of you with any effort are going to go down that path because Pluto and Uranus are going to be supporting the Neptune Saturn. So this Neptune in the positive represents the vision, the dream, the imagination. And Saturn aligning with it is brings in, it really starts to manifest the dream. Um, now, Saturn and Neptune come end of May, June will be within a degree. So it's already impacting uh, you with career matters, going after feeling that you can make your, your career dreams and visions real. But technically, Neptune doesn't exactly align with Saturn at zero degrees of Aries until February the 20th, 2026. It's being set up May, June, 2025, but this Neptune-Saturn conjunction, which only happens every 36 years, technically it doesn't begin till February, 2026, or when the clarity and the focus is really strong. Now, Neptune, when any planet is at, goes into a new sign, new beginnings, it's at zero degrees. There's 30 degrees in a sign, the first degree is zero degrees. But zero degrees of Aries is very important for new beginnings because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and zero degrees of Aries can really trigger some really important new beginnings. And with the Saturn Neptune, it's a major new beginnings of manifesting your vision with your career objectives. Jupiter changes signs in June, but Jupiter changes signs every year. Jupiter is all this prosperity and growth. It's been from the end of May 2024 in Gemini in, uh, until June the 9th, um, at which point when Jupiter in Gemini is in your 12th house, so that could be doing a lot of studying, preparing, developing behind the scenes, all these big career aspirations. But come June the 9th, 2025, expansive, prosperous Jupiter moves into Cancer for one year till June the 30th, 2026. So with all that career emphasis with Neptune and Saturn, Here's, um, here's Jupiter once every 12 years in your first house or in Cancer, bringing a lot of growth and opportunities, could be, um, could be more traveling, more optimism, more prosperity, um, more education. These are all the positive qualities of Jupiter trying to manifest these new beginnings. Now, Uranus is the planet of innovation, liberation, originality, certainly technology. And Uranus, for the first time in 84 years, is moving into Gemini. Gemini, the sign of communications. Um, so Uranus and Gemini 
once every 84 years is going to really awaken all new thinking, original ideas. Um, but Gemini is the sign prior to Cancer. So it's what we call the 12th house because there's 12 signs, there's 12 houses. So Uranus and Gemini is in the last house before it goes into Cancer um, in about seven years. The 12th house has a lot to do with development, working behind the scenes, and, but this Uranus is all this thinking out of the box, all this originality and technology. You could be really building something like a startup company, something that's, that is at the very beginnings of development. And then you're having the Saturn Neptune in the 10th house of careers um, that gets really uh, solidified the beginning of a, that 36 year cycle in February, 2026. So the first half of 2025 is all the, plants, all the planets are changing signs and that can make, be a little nerve wracking, especially since there was so much fear in recent years, a lot of anxiety. So this could be triggering um, our fears again. Um, or certainly, where is this all going to go? Can I trust this? But as the dust settles, you're especially July and August, many of you are going to be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, being able to see these where you're the next major chapter of your life where this huge paradigm shift is taking you. And why July and August is because come July, all the planets, um, the, the Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, are all in harmony with each other July and August. And now we're st it's, it's causing all this more clarity and focus of these new, you know, with you, with career, it could be life purpose, is unfolding. Now, Pluto, back to Pluto. Pluto in Aquarius is bringing um, community and society back slowly together, but it lasts for nearly 20 years. So it's going to take a while, and there'll always be the underbelly and the darkness with humanity, but instead of it seeming like it's 50-50 and we're going off a cliff, Pluto going into Aquarius is going to start bring, bringing down the temperature so it becomes a lot more manageable and not so fearful and crazy as we go in these next couple of years. But since career is very much highlighted with envisioning your dreams and aspirations, Pluto in Aquarius, Aquarius is eight signs past Cancer. So this big transformation is triggering eighth house energies. In business, the eighth house deals with joint ventures, business partnerships, backers, investors. So there's a lot of financial um, uh, support and interactions and, um, to really support this major new career direction. So, I want to thank you for watching. If you like information on how to book an astrology reading or to check out my two question offer, visit my website at gardino.co. That's dot co. Until next year, be safe and well.